Hello. We are familiar with the uh, limit properties, so we can approach limits that are a little more difficult. Then let's have a look at uh, some examples and see how we can evaluate uh, different types of uh, limits and try to get more and more complex uh, expressions of which we need to determine the limits. Let's take the first example, evaluate each limit. First point A, let's evaluate the limit when x approaches 2 from 7. Well, what do you know this? 7 is a constant. There is no variable in this expression. So x can approach any value. The limit of this uh, number 7 is going to be 7, obviously. And we know that based on the property of the limits. But um, it's pretty obvious why. Let's take another uh, example. Point B. Let's evaluate the limit when x approaches minus 1 from this expression, 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. You see this is a polynomial expression and right away you see that we have uh, we are dealing with a sum and a difference which based on the properties we know we can separate we know that the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits or the same happens with a difference. So I'm going to decompose this limit into smaller limits easier to approach. So I'm going to to get through the smallest elements that we know how to determine the limit for. So let's continue here saying that this equals to limit when x approaches minus 1 from 2x squared, the first term, plus limit when x approaches minus 1 from 3x, the second term in there. The, I separated already the sum, as we know based on the properties. And so the difference behaves the same way, so minus limit when x approaches minus 1 from 5. The first limit, we notice that we have 2 times x squared. We can use the constant multiple property, because this is a constant multiplied by x squared. And then, let's try to do two steps in one. So basically, we have a constant multiple and a power. As we know, we can take this constant and uh, factor it in front of the limit. And as we know, the limit of a power is the power of the limit. So for that reason, I'm going to continue saying 2, the constant, times the limit when x approaches minus 1 of x. And the power of the x becomes the power of the limit. Plus, this next uh, limit is much easier because it's just a constant multiple. 3 times x. So 3 comes out of the limit times limit when x approaches minus 1 from x and we can evaluate the limit when x approaches uh, minus 1 from 5 because it's just like before it's a limit of a constant. So it's the constant itself. So it's minus 5. Now we know how to evaluate the limit of x is when x approaches a particular value. We're going to replace this value limit from x when x approaches minus 1 is minus 1. So I'm going to say 2 times minus 1 at power 2 plus 3 times minus 1 minus 5. And evaluating this expression we end up with minus 6. Let's take another example. Let's evaluate the limit from x squared minus 3 over 5 minus x when x approaches minus 2. So let's see uh, how we can apply uh, the limit of a quotient. Well, we know the properties, so the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, so I'm going to evaluate the limit and uh, both numerator and denominators are differences, right? It's x squared minus 3, it's 5 minus x, so I'm going to try to um, go faster and faster with these limits. The limit of this quotient becomes I'm going to put limit at each of these terms. So in the numerator, I'm going to have limit when x approaches minus 2 from x, and that power becomes the power of the limit, minus limit when x approaches minus 2 from that other term, 3, the constant. In the denominator, I'm going to have limit when x approaches minus 2 from 5, minus limit when x approaches minus 2 from x. Now. Obviously, the limit of x when x approaches minus 2 is going to be minus 2. So let's replace that 
it's going to be minus 2 at power 2 minus the limit of a constant is the constant itself so minus 3 and uh, in the denominator again we have a limit of a constant so it's going to be 5 minus and that limit of x when x approaches minus 2 is minus 2 again but I'm going to put it in parentheses because I have this minus minus 2 and now evaluating the uh, this expression we end up with 1 over 7 and this is the limit for our quotient now let's take another example let's try to evaluate the limit when x approaches 3 from a radical of order 4 from 19 minus x so from the properties of the limits we know that the limit of a root is the root of that limit so that's exactly what I'm gonna do next equals to radical of order 4 from the limit of all this uh, expression under the uh, root symbol so it's gonna be limit when x approaches 3 from 19 and because it's a difference I'm gonna separate that as well minus limit when x approaches 3 from x and evaluate those limits in the next step so it's gonna be radical of order 4 from the constant the limit of a constant is 19 the constant itself minus this limit of x when x approaches 3 is gonna be 3 because instead of x I put 3 so that's all it is and now I can evaluate this root so it's gonna be 19 minus 3 is gonna be 16 and radical of order 4 from 16 is 2 as long as you apply the properties of the limits it's all perfectly simple so let's try one more here let's say limit when x approaches 5 from x over 5 minus x just like before I'm gonna take this quotient we know the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits and in the denominator we have a difference so we, it's gonna become the difference of the limits altogether we're gonna have in the numerator limit when x approaches 5 from x and the denominator becomes limit when x approaches 5 from 5 minus limit when x approaches 5 from x and evaluating all those limits because they are very simple we end up with 5 over 5 minus 5 which is equal to 5 over 0 and we know we cannot have 0 in the denominator so this limit is undefined or does not exist this is how you apply those properties in order to evaluate a limit in an algebraic form.